Well, hello and welcome and welcome, welcome. I know, yes, it's been a while and I want to say thank you very much to uh, Malik Dabu for sitting in and holding the fort very strongly uh, while we were in our little republic celebrating our five years. I want to say thank you to all of you who joined in any which way, being physical, morally, however. I want to say a big, big, big thank you. But yes, I am back here and uh, I am back to the BNI behaving lawlessly with a big question mark is what we are asking is the BNI behaving lawlessly but then it takes me back to uh, to our ancestry where we derive our morals and our wisdom and they say that you know it is only a fool who will say they meant them but not us again if you see your friends chain on fire get a pail of water and put it next to yours because you never know when it's going to be yours it's been one too many where, you know, the BNI has moved in and picked people up in the interest of national security. Uh, they've overridden the uh, court's orders. And you ask yourself, when is it going to be your turn? And if it's your turn, who is going to speak for you? I think that's what the big concern is, that for now it's them. But when it's us, who will be there for us if we don't curb it? And indeed, is there something to curb? And that's why I have lawyers in the house so that we can discuss to find out up to what limit has the BNI got? Because these are the guys who have to look after yours and my security. At which point are they able to go beyond the law to protect us? And is that what they are doing? I don't know, but I have lawyers in the house. My name is Nanan Sakwa. This is PM Express. I want to say thank you to GT Bank for sponsoring this show. Don't move. Thank you very much for staying and we are asking is the BNI acting lawlessly and uh, here to give us an education is my good old friend Kojoga Adawudu who is a lawyer and will understand exactly what's going on. Uh, you're welcome my brother. Thank you Nana. Anytime you wear a suit onto my show I get bashing at home that you know look at how sharp your guest is dressed in, you know so i'm going to get a telling off today <laughs> joining us on the phone later will be nana sandy Bediechi, who's also a lawyer to give us an education but before we even go on let's watch this short insert on how this whole saga started jesus christ this is just amazing over 100 vehicles ndc vehicles Popping out from the Spinters Road. Oh my Jesus. Hey, check it out. You can see it. This is all Tata trucks. Christ. I haven't seen this before with police escort. BNI. I can't help but laugh if, if I obey. <laughs> if I if I obey. <laughs> but you know the story is that uh, you know there are cars parked in a compound, and uh, someone lives next door, a doctor who happens to be a Nigerian. These cars are parked in the security coordinator's house. Then the picture circulates on uh, social media, and from the angle of the picture, it seems that you know the picture was taken from next door so he orders that uh the guy be picked up because the story behind the picture is that these cars were meant for the nmc and now they're being branded uh, as party cars wherever that story came from i don't know but he got so upset that he got him uh arrested and, and, and locked up and it, it's it's a whole maze before i even come to that you know there's this fear 
and there's no go area about the BNI. I don't know, being a lawyer, where, where did that culture come from? Before we even get into this story, where does that culture come from? Well, I, I believe that the BNI culture came from maybe the revolutionary days mm -hmm. when most of them were trained in Cuba mm -hmm. and Russia. But most of these people were trained as security people who came from Russia. I think the last crop of some of those people who were trained is the National Security Coordinator now, the Justice Chad, now Furi. All those were the crops that were brought up this time. And you know, strictly as a um, security people, you know, the act of non-disclosure. So when you are arrested and you know, you could see those days, some of them had beers all over. You know, so even if you see the stature and the pedigree of the people, it evokes some fear. I think that had been what was in the revolution. Then it has to be changing when we got into constitutional democracy. I think even the actual name for BNI now is the internal intelligence. BNI used to be a Bureau of National Investigation. But with the 1996, when the law was promulgated, it became the internal intelligence and the research department, which was the intelligence aspect of the foreign affairs, became the external intelligence. So this is how all came about. But because we are used to the name Bureau of National Investigation, and especially some of the overzealous uh, security officers, when they go and you're apprehended, you know, the way they behave over zealousness, sometimes, you know, so people think that they are nice, so fearful like that. But I think that they are human beings. They belong to the society. When they go to their work in their compound and they finish, they still come back to us. So <laughs> I always feel that, oh, yeah, you just have to do your work professionally, and that should be it. I think that's where the problem has been, doing their work professionally, because uh, the BNI seem to, I mean, there are cases where they've denied a client, they are lawyers because you've come too late, or no, you won't see him today, or you won't see her tomorrow, and then we come back and say, oh, no, it's not in the Constitution, they can't do that. They, I mean, what, what, what can they do and what cannot? No, 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 even before I go there, the surprise me. Today I went, I was in court, so I got to be in around 2.10. I went there and they said, I said I was coming to see my client, but we'll be in court tomorrow. They said, no way. They won't even give me the form to fill because 2 o'clock, I can't see my client. I can't have a conference. You know, and I was like, how? Oh, a lawyer coming to have, because it's a well-established procedure for every lawyer. You should be able to have access before we act on but when they said it, that you can't have assets, it's okay. If that's your procedure and you say, but you know, for me, I think it's unconstitutional because we have working hours, which stands from eight o'clock to four or five. So if somebody comes and you say you won't allow, that's well, your duty. What if their working hours is from eight to two? So let the public know. It should not be shrouded in secrecy. Let the public know that, look, this is the time we work. Let the public know that the law gives us or mandates us to keep you for 48 hours. So if you cooperate with us, we will do the investigation, the interrogation for 48 hours, we can leave. I don't think any decent thinking person will go when he's been told that we have 48 hours to do interrogation. So you cannot have access to your client. I don't think, but when you go and you are denied, nobody speaks to you, they leave you there, you sit down. That is where the cause, you know, people become jittery. They don't tell you anything, you are put there. And I always tell them, I go to be an ass like, behave professionally, be the security personnel, laugh with the people, be humane, but enforce what you are supposed to do, because that is your job. But when you see the person, you have fumed, you are angry, you wanted to be a security personnel. So 
if you are keeping somebody and somebody is coming, that is your job. Do it professionally. Because if I come, you tell me that I can't see this month, this period, I'm doing interrogation, so be it. I think every decent person would really understand. But when it becomes a gang style, I have the authority when I speak, nobody speaks, I'm the demi semi god, or this thing. In the constitutional era, that has no place. Let's, let's go back to what you know, brings us here, which is uh, this picture circulating on social media. The angle of the picture seems to be coming from next door to security coordinator's house. So he says, look, it's invasion of my privacy. Uh, you know, lock him up. No, no, it is the national security advisor. Advisor. Because the, uh, the Security and Intelligence Act may create the position of the national security coordinator. Okay. He coordinates the National Security Council. But this is appointed by the president as his advisor on security issues. Yes, the issue is, I, when I saw that, then I was like, oh, this man, on a lighter note, will qualify to be as a journalist because he was reporting <laughs> what he had seen, <laughs> you know. And if vehicles had been parked, they are moving. Now, for me, the issue is if you think that there is something criminal about this. The constitutionally mandated body to look at that is the police. Make a complaint to the police. Police will do their work. When, that's when you believe that some criminal activity has gone on. They will look at it and it will go. But where it happens like, oh, let me just ask somebody to show him where power lies. That is what connotes. It it's even takes the shine out whether actually there was some criminality involved in the matter. You know, now people will not focus and say that it was a criminal activity, but now it's the aftermath. What had happened? That, you know, the BNI takes the money into custody, takes the money into custody, and they say, we won't give you access. I think that is where people have problem mm. with the whole scenario in this matter. And I believe that if they had handled it very well, I don't think that Ghanaians, because the cause of worry for people now is that look, the way the BNI is being used, or they are positioning themselves in society, even within their constitutional democracy, that's the cause of worry for everybody, all well-meaning Ghanaians because their wigs has to be clipped. The law, they need to you know, go within the confines of the law. They, they, let me go back. I mean, this guy who saw these cars and photographed them, I mean, I don't see anything wrong with it. So what, cars with stickers on it belonging to a political party, every political party, uh, even the small ones, I mean, I don't want to mention names, have got stickers on their cars. Now, uh, if he thought there were anything wrong with it, I mean, I, I doubt if there's any policeman who would, you know, write a letter to the uh, NDC because he said, well, I suspect something fishy and therefore I, I need to come and investigate. It won't happen in this side of the world. That's also another culture we have developed. So, I mean, I mean all he can do is just video it and, and blast it. But in doing that, what, what does he flout? Oh, I believe that if they are looking at it, maybe when it comes to um, owning a property and maybe your privacy, because people will feel that it's an intrusion into your privacy, that this is my privacy. Um, I believe the property belongs to the National Security Advisor, where this vehicle is. Let us also not forget the political parties are guaranteed by the Constitution. Political parties own assets. They own assets. That is why the law even makes that they will always have to put their financial statements every time submitted to the Electoral Commission. So if you have all the scars and other things, definitely it has to reflect in your financial statement to the Electoral But I believe that 
looking at it that the intrusion into the private residence. So let me just take a quick break yeah. here and acknowledge GT for sponsoring the show. Thing, and we're just trying to establish if indeed the BNI is acting lawlessly or they are working within uh, their, the remains of their law. And because uh, you are just you're trying to uh, establish what what I mean, what wrong could have been done, you know, by this guy, you know, invading somebody's privacy. Uh, and it, you know, security advisor is quite a sensitive position, so you just don't get in your window and take photographs of his compound just because you have the privilege of living next door? Yeah, that's a, it's a thin line. Watch. Yes, that is a, is it a position we are looking at or he's as a person's privacy, right? So if that is what may be intrusion and the law is clear that, look, your privacy is guaranteed as a citizen. So if your privacy is guaranteed as a citizen and nobody will have to deprive you of some things in society, as the Constitution had said clearly, now, even you think that that's a criminal element in what has been done, I think that there are channels by which that person should be brought to book. But then what has been done, or what we hear from the media, until maybe the BNI give us all the information as to what led to the arrest, and it's shared with the people we are informed. Because at now, it's either we are informed or we are misinformed of what actually had happened. Mm. That's why I believe that even if that is it, and there is a criminal element in it, it should have been reported to the appropriate authorities, which will investigate, invite the person, and the necessary procedure would have gone through. But where it's been, you know, speculated, or even been said, though I understand um, the National Security Advisor said, he caused the arrest. We don't know what kind of complaint he made to the BNI and others that he was, that it's actually, but if you look at the functions of the uh, intelligence agencies, if you permit me, I may read some mm. few ones so that sure. we can know what is their function. Then we can know whether they are veering into other things which it ought not to be or has to be. Sure. One, it's a function of intelligence agencies. The intelligence agencies shall collect, analyze, retain, and disseminate as appropriate information and intelligence regarding activities that may constitute threat to the security of the republic or the government. Safeguard the economic well-being of the republic against threats posed by the acts or emission of persons or organizations, both inside and outside the country. Protect the republic against threat of espionage, sabotage, terrorism, hijacking, piracy, drug trafficking, and similar offenses. Protect the Republic against the activities of persons, both national and non-nationals, intended to overthrow the government or undermine the constitutional order through illegal, political, military, industrial, any other means, or through any other unconstitutional method. And the last one says, may perform any other function directed by the president or the council. Now, the, the, the last one says what? Any other function directed by the president or the council. Now, the reason why he's talking about the president or the council here is that this act establishes, and the constitution also established, National Security Council. The National Security Council is presided over by the president. Mm. So that's why it says either the president or the council itself. And the person who coordinates all the activities of the National Security Council is the National Security Coordinator. But the director of the BNI, which is the Internal Intelligence, is a member of that council. So those are the things that they are supposed, they are mandated by law to be doing. Let me, let me acknowledge uh, your colleague, uh, Nana Santibediotio, who is also a lawyer. Uh, Nana Santibediotio, you, you're welcome. Thank you. 
Uh, we are discussing, you know, and trying to find out uh, where the BNI, uh, where their law starts from and where it ends. But uh, I'm sure you just heard that. That was uh, Kujoga Dawudu reading some of the uh, do's and don'ts of, of the BNI, what, what their law says. But I, I, I will just start with you. I mean, what would cause a BNI straight arrest by bypassing the police? I mean, what, what are some of the things that can... So the BNI just moves in without the police? Well, I mean, uh, the, 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 the BNI, uh, to me, it's a, it's a specialized police. And um, uh, the, normally, um, they, they investigate matters that are a bit more than uh, the ordinary the police, uh, uh, the police would deal with. I think they, they, they come under the ambit of the uh, uh, national security uh, uh, practice, and therefore uh, they're not uh, entirely um, the same as the police, even though they exercise police power. So, uh I mean, in certain instances, you can, instead of going to a normal police station, you can go to the BNI. No, you can't. The, uh, it's not, uh, uh, they're not peace officers in the sense that the police are. Um, and the BNI, for example, if there's an investigation that the Attorney General Department is undertaking, uh, they would, uh, they could use the BNI. Have I lost Nana there? Sound, if you can uh, get, get him back for me. Well, uh, let, me, let me come to Kojo. So, uh, then maybe it's not too out of the limit for the advisor to initiate the BNI rather than Kaneshi Police Station or Kantobint or Airport Police Station. No, no. You see, that, that's the, what, what I actually Sometimes, yes, he is the national security advisor. But as national security advisor, you advise the president on security matters, matters that come to your purview, right? Mm -hmm. And the president can always determine uh, persons that he can appoint. He, has, he can appoint three people to the security, national security council, which he may decide to appoint the advisor or people into that. Now, until you are appointed and you know that, then that is when the body that constitutes the National Security Council, there are issues. So you have a duty to the presidency, to the president as the security advisor. Well, the National Security Council, it has almost all the security agencies the military, the chief of defense staff, the IGP, director of immigration, all of them, military intelligence, fire service, all these people are members, minister of interior, foreign affairs, in any other ministries that the president thinks should be member of that security council. Mm -hmm. So they take a decision. And, you know, mostly they are being briefed. He also can get some of the issues and brief the president as to his movement, what has to happen, because all of them, so they work hand in hand. Mm -hmm. If the issue is because I'm in the, um, the national security advisor, I can only maybe advise or make a complaint or get to my colleagues and say, look, I have a complaint. This is the issue. So get to work. It's in your purview. I think that that would but I also believe that because maybe, that's why I'm saying that if BNI give us the actual complaint that was made, then we will get the information as to why. Maybe in his view, it was intrusion or it was to public safety or insecurity or was to undermine, this was done to undermine the government. Because if you look at their parameters, 
anything that you want to also do to undermine the government or bring the government down, uh, these are issues. But you need to collaborate. So that's why even this act acts that they have police powers and they need to collaborate. One of the uh, institutions we have recently also added is the Yoko. But they also look at the economic well-being of the state. So they fall under all this? Yes, yes. They, Yoko comes under the Ministry of Art. But they have powers, police powers. They have police powers. So sometimes they also investigate and take people and lock them. Let me, let me go back to uh, Nana Santibedezio. Nana, welcome back. No, thank you. The line is not very good at all. I, I, I apologize. I'm going to uh, lift my voice up Hello. and see. Hello, Nana. Hello? Uh, yeah, is, is yeah. it? I am raising my voice to see if it will be any better. <laughs> uh, I was just trying to find out. I mean, we, we are all assuming that maybe just because the guy took a picture, uh, it shouldn't be a BNI matter. But maybe there was more, you know, more to it than what we know. I mean, I don't know if, if you're privy to anything else other than taking a picture from an angle which determines he took it from his office or from his house. Well, uh, first of all, I mean, I'm, I'm not privy to any such information, number one. Number two, I'd be interested in finding out just how the police figured out, or the BNI figured out, uh, that the picture was taken from his uh, premises simply based on the angle. Today, there's drone photography. It can take from any angle at all uh, and from somebody's premises without any person within the premises actually haven't taken the picture. Mm. So I'd be very interested to find that out. Uh, but I don't have any further information other than what is in the public domain. And, it, and I doubt that there's any more information. Otherwise, the BNI, given the public outrage, would have uh, put that out already. Um, I don't see um, where the BNI uh, comes in at all. And, uh, Perhaps in the coming days, the BNI will be able to tell us uh, how they believe um, they, they come in. No, no. Uh, the BNI, to me, is like the Federal Bureau of Investigation in the U.S., which is under the Justice Department. Um, and they involve, they involve themselves in the investigation of um, crimes relating to racketeering um, and um, a sort of uh, higher police... Uh, uh, crimes that the police locally would um, take care of, but you can't walk into an FBI office and make a complaint that somebody has robbed you. Um, although they do have informants that um, inform them of uh, crimes that may be ongoing relating to drugs, relating to money laundering, relating to uh, uh, um, organized crime, and so on and so forth. I imagine that um, that would be the remit of the Bureau of National Investigations as well. Um, now, uh, the difficulty uh, in this particular instance um, is that a, a one cannot see, um, given the facts that we know, uh, why the BNI would get involved. I imagine the police could not get involved because there is no clear-cut crime having been committed. So it, it would be interesting to find out why the BNI uh, got involved because if there's no clear-cut crime that even the police could pursue, I'm uh, baffled as to what uh, the the BNI uh, would have seen in order for them to uh, invite and question and detain the managing director of the company for so long. Now, now let me come in here. I mean, should should Ghanaians be excited that we have a very effective BNI? Or should we be worried because we have a BNI who seem to have too much power? Oh, I, I you know, I mean, the, the, whether BNI has too much power is, is, a, is, is relative. Um, I don't think that we should be excited uh, because in the last uh, week or two, we, the BNI has been in the news for reasons that I think uh, can charitably be described as embarrassing. And so we ought not to be excited. There have been too many, uh, quote-unquote, mistakes. Um, I don't believe that the, uh, as reported by Joy News, the National Security Advisor claims that he directed the police to arrest uh, the gentleman. Uh, 
Uh, my understanding is that he was then handed over to the BNI. Uh, the question is that law enforcement agencies and institutions of state should do more than just obey the instructions of powerful people in government. They must ask themselves, first and foremost, because they've got directors, people who run those organizations. They must ask themselves whether what they're being asked to do is within the law and is within their remit. Otherwise, they should be able to decline to do it and direct the uh, a government agent to the appropriate quarters if necessary. Uh, and so to answer your question, mm. I don't think that um, this is uh, um, a reflection of uh, the BNI acting expeditiously or efficiently to protect our interests. Uh, rather, I think, um, unfortunately, it reflects a certain embarrassment on all of us. Now, now, hold on. Let me come to studio and speak to uh, Kujoga. Uh, Kujo, do you think this is, again, brewed out of our ignorance and you know, not knowing our rights. I mean, could this be what is fueling that? Because if the average person thinks, hey, what's your police at a deal? Hey, what's your soldier at a deal? You know, so then you give the <laughs> the other party, you know, more powers than they have. <laughs> no, no, you know, when you started, I was laughing. It's not just because of the question. You know why? I went to BNI one of the days. So I was speaking to one of the officers and I said, ah, Chief, what you're doing, it's not right. I said, look, if you come here, you don't know your right, and you be trampled upon your right. It's you. You don't know your right. If you tell me that this is my right, I will not do it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he was candid with me. I, when I go there, I don't really have any exchange. And this is what he told me, that if you know your right and you can assert your right, what has to be done, they will do it. But if you don't assert your right, they will do what they are supposed to do. <laughs> I, 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 I get it. Mm -hmm. It's because we don't also know our right. We don't want to assert our right. And even when we go, you know, there's a fear. You know, you've been, some fear has been put in you. That, that when you hear names. the name BNI, you know, then you think that, look, where I'm going, I'm finished. But they, they are like, so when we get to know, and you go and you tell them that, no, this is the procedure, this is how it ought to be. They understand and they know that, look, no, I don't need to do what we usually do, the normal I, thing. I'll I take a quick a quick break here and I'll come back and I'll tell you what, even though I've never been on BNI, I'll tell you what yeah, I know of it. Now, I'll be back with just two minutes, I'll be back with you. Mm. So don't go, hang on for me. Uh, we are looking at uh, if the BMI, BNI is acting lawlessly. And I'll tell you what I know about BNI. I know they have really high walls. And I hear there's this huge room. And there's a, there's a chair in the middle of the room. And it, it's dark. And you don't see anybody. And you're just left there. You know, and, <laughs> and that's the story I know of the BNI. And I, I just don't want to go there for anything. And so I can imagine that if... BNI man calls me. I, I wouldn't be finding out whether he's acting within the law or not. All I'll be pleading for will be sympathy. But Nana, do you want you wanted to come in and say something? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, I I don't think um, it's as simple as the citizens not knowing their rights. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's I don't think that's the case at all. I think that there is a certain penchant on um, the part of. Uh, the, those who have police uh, security powers in this country to um, disregard uh, some of the important rights that we have. I mean, we've only just had a situation where people have been ordered freed by a court mm -hmm. and we're being told that a, a sister institution asked that they be held over and so they were held for another 100 hours uh, and then and then deported. I mean, these are people who cannot be said to uh, not to know their rights, and yet those rights were violated. We have a situation where my client, uh, uh, Captain Koda, um, was um, uh, invited to the BNI, um, 
he was put on police and quiet bail. Uh, he was to be taken to court and charged. He was never charged. And yet he was held over on a Thursday uh, going into the eve of Good Friday uh, for over 100 hours. Uh, Captain Koda cannot be said to be somebody who doesn't know his rights, mm. but those rights are violated. So I don't think it's a simple question of not knowing your rights. They have the power to do the things they do, and they will do it again. No, no, so could, could, you, could you go back to court and say, look, my client's rights has been violated because he was held for more than 48 hours. I mean, is there oh, yes. a room for I that? I've, I've said that. I mean, we are going to go back to court. Um, my colleague, uh, uh, my colleague's uh, 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 senior lawyer, Usufojo and uh, Tatcha, are going to be in court on the issue of the contempt uh, of court that was... Um, perpetrated by the BNI officials by refusing to release the um, South African Three when the court granted bail. We intend to pursue a claim before the High Court, Human Rights Court, on the unlawful detention of Captain Koda. So that I think, because you know, a lot of these things uh, are resolved by litigation and people's rights become clearer and um, practical effect is given to constitutional and other statutory provisions that protect our rights. So we want to know uh, the extent of this 48-hour rule, because the Constitution says that mm. if you are arrested, you must be brought before uh, a court within 48 hours. It doesn't say uh, except for holidays and weekends. So 48 hours is 48 hours, and we want a declaration from the court on that issue so that we can all be settled in our mind that when the Constitution says 48 hours, it admits of no exceptions, and therefore it cannot be an excuse to keep you behind bars because it's the weekend or a holiday. A court can be found if one is required to be found. It happens mm -hmm. all the time. Um, secondly, it is important that as a deterrent and for the... Uh, um, anxiety and distress that um, is suffered by um, uh, people who are kept for more than 48 hours, uh, the state ought to compensate them uh, for that. And so we will also be seeking uh, damages. Nana, Nana, hold, Nana, hold on there for me. Let me come to you, Kujo. Kujo. Is it because we haven't tried this? Because it's happened way too long where people are held longer than the mandatory. Is it because maybe it's too long a process and the, the probably you can't sue you know for a large amount of money so it's a waste of time let's let it go no it, it's, it's the experience that they take you through and sometimes when they take you through the experience and you look at the court system the frustration that you may go through people think that look, why would i even go after this after all, but i think go. that for me i agree with nana to go so that the court pronounces on this 48 hours. Because, you see, when it suits you, you want the 48 hours, you say weekends are not involved. So you have somebody is incarcerated on a Friday, and you think that it should be released on a Tuesday. You know, all the sizes, everybody, when it suits you, when it's not. But I think that the court needs to make a definite pronouncement on this 48 hours. They take it there because the courts don't work over the weekend, but the Constitution never said anything. It says 48 hours. And you see, the law even gives powers that when you want to uh, warrant an arrest, you can even go to a judge. You can even go to a senior police officer and other, under the security to get what you want, the warrant. And you need to give reasons, you know. So for me, yes, definitely, I think that for some few days, B and I have been in the news for bad reasons. It, it started some time during the revolution after uh, constitutional democracy. I think that gap was shed off. Well, they do other good jobs, mm. but this that gap was shed off. Then it came back. And I don't know, I'm tempted to believe that sometimes it's the leadership at the moment that their style of doing things dictate the pace. Because you could see several directors came, 
during some of their time, you don't see some of these things mm -hmm. happening. Why is it that some, when they come, things which have to go through a proper channel and procedure as the law mandates? And as Nana said, you know, our security personnel sometimes, they, they are overzealous and the pension to show that, look, I belong to the security. The law is, you I know, am, I, I will not abide. And you see, for me, because sometimes I do some cases, especially the police, and I, you know, they do all manner of things. And at the end of the day, they tell you, oh, if you want to see me, you see the IGP. And attorney general would come and defend whatever they've done wrong. They are not held responsible. So they know no matter what I do, the state will come in. And at the end of the day, the state will have to settle. So some reckless decisions are taken. Mm. We have fine security people, but some take reckless decisions. And even before attorney general can get them to sit and ask them, some they will even go. And I think it is time that people who take reckless decisions and do things on their own, under the pretext and the guys that we are acting for on behalf of the state, you know, we should be surcharged. I believe that when this happens, reason will prevail. Mm. They will respect the law, they will respect order. Because I, I think for the past, the BNR has been in, but it's an issue of simple procedure that you need to do. S simple procedure that you go, even if a sister organization wants, that look, these South Africans, they are mm. threat to our security. A bail has been given. You know, and one of the things principle, you know, is that a judge can make any decision, whether right or wrong, at that material moment, that is the law. So if a judge makes and you think that this was, is one of the stupid, excuse my language, <laughs> one of the nonsense or stupid things that that judge has done, it says that at that time, respect that order and you can have opportunity to set it aside. Now, if a sister organization wants, yes, they have their own confine and pen. And if their law mandates them to act, let's follow a procedure. Let justice be seen to be in a transparent manner. But sometimes when you see justice being shrouded in secrecy and mystery, then people don't really understand. And I think it's just a clear case where things have to be done, people to understand. It's not been done. Let's go back to this. Uh, you know, BNI takes the SA3 to court. Uh, court grants them bail. Immigration thinks, no, 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 these guys are a threat to us, therefore hold them. I mean, aren't they within the right to protect us by telling the BNI, no, 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 these guys may, you know, destable the government or, you know, cause a coup d'etat, whatever it is, so hold them. Yeah, that's what I was believing. I was thinking if that was the case. Whilst BNI was going to court with the South African, what should have been done is that the immigration should have sent their personnel and said, look, we also want them for interrogation, or we are inviting them. So even whilst they are giving bail and execution of bail has been done, then they can now be handed over to immigration, right? Mm -hmm. The immigration has power. It's their act. That says that, look, the director has power if you want to deport. So that means you have satisfied the due process. So the people have been granted bail. It's been executed. But where it has been granted and the judge says, do this ABC, and you think that um, the, the order that the judge has made is so stupid, I'm not going to obey it, or I'm taking them. You could say, look, even if the people who stand as surety are not ready, we are taking them back. When they are ready, come, we will bring them and we'll go through the procedure. On that note, let me just take a quick pause and then we're coming straight back. To say, let me catch up with this message. Uh, this is from Harry from Udumasi Krobo. <clears throat> says, the BNI has a professional conduct and work in general. Their task assigned them distinguished from other security service. They have a tact of rendering intrigue 
intrigue investigation over what goes beyond normal security operations. In Ghana, it is a phenomenal to lambast present government, especially in an event working with security experts, expertise. Contemporary. The BNI Act acted so professionally by arresting the three mercenaries who were underway training persons and under unlawful process. Their efforts are sometimes right to ensure strict investigation and official state assignment. Their work was in order. Uh, recent pictorial evidence was a, was a sham thought and a mere political understanding. Secondly, apprehension difference from, differs from arresting. These, uh, these are two diverse criminal terminologies. The BNI are pretty requisite investigative security experts prior to ad arresting. Their work is more in-depth and often crack the whip where necessary, virtually on issues concerning serious criminal and uh, leeching offenses. The bottom line is every successive government works in tandem with government officials for safety, security, stability, and tranquility. Harry from Oduma Sikropo. What, what's arresting and apprehension? No, no, you see, I think that what people are getting wrong is nobody's saying that the work of BNI, it's not important. Mm. Investigating the, and protecting the security of this nation, nobody's saying is underestimating that. They do a lot of work, good job. Sometimes it's the procedure, the way they handle the issue, the aftermath of it. I think that is giving Ghanaians cause for worry. Mm. No, nobody said that, look, yes, if they picked up these people and to investigate and find out, yes, was it espionage, was it a sabotage? They have the information. But the end result, how they go about it, the procedure, and the shadow, I think that is the reason. And I think my beginning in my comment, I said, look, if you come and they tell you that we have 48 hours to interrogate you, we cannot see or we cannot have access to him after 48 hours. The law is clear on 48 hours. I don't think any decent person will go. So nobody, I think he is thinking that what we are saying, that they are not doing a good job. No, they are there to protect us. Well, this, this one is for yeah. you. Lawyer Dawudu, I thought you were one of the propagandists, but you have proven me wrong tonight. TB Janga. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I, 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 I believe that in politics, when you are doing politics, at least let the truth stand. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, let the truth stand and let us know what it is. How can we do it? I believe that politics is to influence people mm. in a direction that we can go. So everybody will be at peace. Mm. It, it, what this brings about conflict among people and deep mistrust and suspicion, mm. you know? And for me, the same people who even suffers more is the same DNA. Because when government changes hand, People think that, look, this man, when he was here, he caused my arrest. And if they are vindictive, they will do the same thing. How far can we go? And sometimes I tell them that, you see, you're an institution that at the end of the day, you become the victim mm. because you will still be at the place. People will victimize you and say, well, we're here, you maltreated us. But if you do your professional job, at the end of the day, the person knows that, look, Although this man didn't give me a favor, listen, he was candid. He was doing his job. Let them be like, if you're not my friend, I won't help you, but I won't also destroy you. If you're my friend and I say I can't help you, so be it. You know, mm. let it be. So when they are professional, I believe that what they are doing, because apart from that, me and I do background investigations. Most of our judges, people appointed, they would have to go through all the background, check. And if they give you the depth of information, they would dig about somebody. All this has been done. But it's at the end of the day, how they go. I believe that the psyche of being a security officer, being with BNI, that when people see me, they should be running away 
should be thin of the past. Yes. Because I always say, look, if I'm a policeman and you flout the law, I'll be laughing with you. But I will arrest you. you. I will enforce the law. <laughs> this one says, Nana, I'm enjoying your program. I really like the submissions from lawyer Dawudu. The BNI should do their homework well. Selo Mensa from Ilikpe Mate. And then this one says, Nana, let the BNI personnel know that NDC won't be in power forever. Hmm, this is from Nene in Sunyane. Uh, this one says, Nana, the BN, Nana, the BNI, the BNI has become a tool to humiliate people of this state instead of finding the truth for the people. I'm Kweku Duku in Takorade. Uh, like you're saying, is building a mistrust between the people. Nana, if the implication is government vehicles are being used by a political party, the BNI have every right to investigate, Reggie. But then they were investigating the picture, but not the cars, if the cars are indeed government and being used for uh, you know, it, it, political. Yet, you see, it's being branded. Now, if really that's what we have to be privy from National uh, Commission on Civic Education, do they have some vehicle that has been allocated to them? Have they imported some vehicle which has not been handed and has been branded? Those are things that will be investigated. The, the quick one, this was apprehend involves criminal cases while arrest involves civil cases. The apprehension and uh, the criminal... Apprehend involves criminal cases while arrest involves civil cases. This is Jarela from who? I, I think what he's trying, or he, I get him his understanding, is that maybe the intrusion, which would be a criminal thing. No, because somebody sent a message that apprehending, ap arresting and apprehending are two different things in, in, in law. And so he's come to say that, you know, you apprehend criminals and arrest, you know, people who you know, something to do with a civil case, but I, I thought you just no, arrest no, anybody no. who did something wrong. I, I, I think you arrest somebody any time. That is in a criminal matter. They are, you know, it's, I, I think it's, it's the semantics because it's not a term of art when it comes to law. When we say a term of art, maybe in law, when they use a particular word, it means a particular meaning. Let's say, um, let me give you, let's say, a word in law. Let's say possession. If I say possession and it's in land matters, possession means that you are occupying the land. Whether physically you are there or you put even the pillars, it shows that the land belongs to you. You are looking at it. So if you say possession, is a term of art. Mm. But if you say arrest or apprehend, it's not a term of art. Those are English words. Mm -hmm. that, yeah. This is Nana. How does the BNI handle the issue? Let the lawyer expound instead of sweeping the explanation under the carpet. Harry from Udumasi Krobo. Uh, Harry is the one who is saying that secondly, you know, apprehension differs from address, the two diverse criminal I, I don't, I don't, I, Harry, I, I missed the point. I don't know if Yeah, yeah I, I think if Harry can, um, because to apprehend somebody, you know, if you look at, for me, it's more, about semantics. Mm. That's why I'm saying that it is not so, so, a term of art. Maybe when it comes into law, that you say it's a term of art. So you, a, a bit more information and a bit more following the procedure from the BNI side would put us all at peace. Well, yes. For, for me, I think that they are doing their job. If they will do their job professionally, not to let things be shrouded in secrecy. Let everything be transparent. This is what you've done this is what we have against you, then everybody would know, can follow. But when there is a kind of lack of transparency, then you start to think that look, things are not being done in the right manner. Leave people to start speculating. Yes. Well, let me say thank you very much. And uh, thank you very much. Joga Ataudu, who's uh, educated us today. We thank you to Nana Santibedia, too, who also joined us on the phone. But before I sign up, let me say thank you, thank you so much, all of you who came to join us in our little Republic of Edumasa to celebrate uh, well, my five year anniversary. Indeed, a big thanks to Odin uh, Hokwa for the third and Nana Frakuma the second who graced the occasion. Nana, I would also congratulations, although I haven't been able to come. 
And let me congratulate my very my friend, Dr. Nash, who has been appointed a governor. I just say, Nash, you are fairly a young man. A lot of people are looking up to you. The president has reposed confidence in you. Mm -hmm. Don't fail the youth. A lot of I will pray for you. I share in that thought big time. And tomorrow we'll be back to do this all over again. Thank you for watching. <laughs>